and continuation of our website design, we want to spruce it up a little bit and add a few things that you don't really see on the main page. So let's start out on our settings tab. This is really important for uh, what you might have heard called SEO or search engine optimization. Let's go down to permalinks. And right now, the default is set at movfitness.com slash fitness question mark p equals one two three and that's it's not really ideal for search engines to look for this it doesn't consider it a very high structure so let's go ahead and click on month and name and you'll see the custom structure show up down here if you chose month and name that's actually not that bad that's probably your best choice out of all of the common settings but I'd rather take that a step further and delete everything in here except for the post name. Now what you find with that when you save the changes, let's go ahead and visit our site. And when you click on course map, the name up here actually is course map instead of p equals one two three. This is really important for Google whenever it's searching. Okay, so now that that's done, that honestly changes the whole layout of your website so we get a lot better search engine results. Some of our other search, some of our other websites, you can go ahead and type in Santa Monica Boardwalk and you'll see here there's one of our races, same race, same race, same race. Um, so we're easily in, here's the Santa Monica Boardwalk again, we're easily in about 15 out of the top 20 search results just by typing in Santa Monica Boardwalk. Um, we've only had that race around for about two months, and the search engine optimization that I'm showing you now definitely plays a part in that. Now last time I didn't show you what a post was, but we're going to go ahead and make a post. Posts are used after you already have the site made, and maybe we want to upload some race results. Maybe we want to add a little bit of information about what's happening at the current time of the year. So these are for current events and stuff like that. So there's already one post in here, and let's just go ahead and delete it. It's, it's kind of pointless. just shows you how to use the post. Let's click Add New. And let's call this race results for June 6th. And in here, we'll upload all of our race results. We don't have any yet, but you know how to do that once you get them. What I want to teach you is the tags over here. Tags, we want race results pictures. After you get all of your stuff, click Add, and you'll see down here all the tags that you used. Now we want to put those in a category, and let's go ahead and click Add Category. Let's call that Race Results. All of this is important for your search engine optimization. Make sure you always have tags. Make sure you have it in a category that is appropriate for whatever your post is. And you can even see the permalink up here, race results for June 6th. I think that's appropriate. That'll work. And then we publish. Okay, so far we've changed our permalinks. We've added tags. Now let's go to our links category. On the links you'll see all kinds of stuff that WordPress added in. So they could get better search engine results themselves. We don't really need any of this stuff, so let's click on Select All and delete all of them. Before, when we were on our main website, they showed up in the far right-hand corner. I'll go ahead and show you where they were. We go to our website, And they showed up right down here, right underneath the pages. We don't need those. Also, this information here, I don't like it to be on the main page. It looks makes it look like a like a
like a blog. Even though it is a blog, we don't want it to look like one. So let's go to, let's see, appearance. And widgets. Now, if you have a good blog theme, it will have all of your stuff on the far right hand side over here showing what is on your main page. This one unfortunately doesn't show that, so you have to actually go in and edit the actual code to make that work. So we'll show that in another tutorial. Lastly, we want to learn how to throw in plugins. So let's click on plugins. And you can either add new if you already have some on your own computer, or you can choose find additional plugins from your site. This is usually the, e the easiest, because you don't have to drag and drop anything. It's just a one-click install. Let's click on popular. Most of the ones that I use are already in the popular categories. And here's an all-in-one SEO pack. That definitely helps a lot, so let's install it. Click install. All right, that's installed. Go to popular. And we're going to repeat this for all of the plugins. And I know this might seem daunting, but go ahead and watch this part of the tutorial so you know which plugins I recommend. The Super Cache is also a great one to use. You can read up on the information about these and get an idea of why I recommend all of these. Um, but honestly, they're popular for a reason, so you might as well install them all. And we need a contact form. As you can see, there's a lot of different plugins here that you could use. The ones that I use are standard on almost all of my websites, and I have about 200 websites, so I have a pretty fast way of doing all of this. We might decide to upload some YouTube videos later, so I'll go ahead and install this one as well. For races, I like to choose the Share This plugin. That way, if somebody got 30th place in the race and they want to show all their buddies on Facebook what place they got, they can just click this one button and it'll show up there. So let's install that one as well for all of our races. And any of your posts, you might want to do that as well. And that's about it. After we have all of our plugins selected, let's go back to the plugin main page. Now here you'll see all of your plugins that aren't installed yet. We're going to want to click the check mark and activate all of these. And you have some that might show up in the inactive plugins down here. So go ahead and activate them as well. And that's it. So that's how to start the plugins, but that's not the end of the story. Each plugin has specific options and details, so you'll have to go ahead through and read the details for each of those. You could do that by either clicking on the name over here, or if you're really computer savvy, you can click on the word edit over on the side. And that's a lot of the stuff behind the curtain that you see with WordPress that a lot of people don't activate, but it makes a world of a difference on your website. And that concludes this tutorial.